Have you ever spoken to the big three? The most interesting for me is Nadal because I, I obviously understand Spanish and English and it's fun when I when I go to Madrid and when I go to a tournament when he obviously has to speak both both languages. He analyzes the game much, much more in Spanish. I believe he is not as nice in Spanish to the Spanish reporters. You seem to always be online, always providing information to the fans. How do you do it? Yeah, I, I don't I don't sleep much. That that's the first thing. Welcome back once again, everybody. We're here again for the Game to Love podcast, uh, bringing you more surprises yet again, aren't we, JG? They're just coming out of the woodwork these days. Yeah, no player today, but we have someone in the tennis world who is a big name. Um, I think he's a must follow. If you've got a Twitter account, you're going to be following him. You get all of the news. He's on Instagram too. Uh, I think over 250,000 tweets, which is just Mind blowing, <laughs> and then <laughs> honestly, so many followers as well. I think 60k followers. But without further ado, let's invite him straight to the podcast. I see he's waiting here. Uh, today we have Jose Morgado. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Jose. Hey guys, thank you so much for having me, and thank you for the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Yeah, no, yeah, I you're... honestly mean it. You are a massive name in terms of like everything tennis. If you want to find out about anything what's going on, we often will have a podcast. We'll be like, oh, let's just go on Twitter. Let's see what Hoso said about it all. <laughs> and we'll find out the latest information. It doesn't matter if it's early hours in the morning, late at night. You seem to always be online, always providing information to the fans. Uh, first of all, how do you do it? Yeah, I don't I don't sleep much. That That's the first thing. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> And, and the, sec the second thing is basically because I really enjoy doing this. Like, I, I, I still have, obviously, to, to work uh, while, I'm, while I'm tweeting. But, but yeah, when I, when I started tweeting, like, I, I believe 10 years ago, just as a tennis fan, as a, I, I was at the school back at the time, I started on Twitter because I, I, I wanted to follow my favorite players and obviously my favorite tennis reporters. And I try to do a bit, a bit of the same, like providing the most information that I that I can provide to to the people that follow me, and and I think I do it. I, I try to do it well and, and to do and to do it like the entire day because tennis never stops, as you as you you all know. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Yeah, I completely echo what uh, JG was saying. You're just one of these uh, people. Who, since we started the podcast, you're the go-to guy. Uh, yeah, um, we just see all of these stats that are just coming out left, right, and centre. And we've been uh, promoting you a lot on the podcast as well, and promoting your channel. And uh, we will continue, well, continue to do so because uh, you seem to have your finger on the pulse of tennis all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. I try to. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Uh, uh, you also uh, you working for some sports channels as well? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I actually at the moment I have like three jobs. I have my tennis website. Wow. My tennis website is is pretty much what what I do during during the day. What I do every day, and then I, I work for a, a TV channel just doing tennis commentaries. The the channel is it's called Sport TV. It's the ch the channel that has the ATP tour. And Wimbledon in Portugal. Then, then the other three slams are on Eurosport. I am on Sport TV with the ATP Tour and Wimbledon since 2018, I believe. That's this is my third year as a as a as a TV commentator. And and wow. I since since I, since I left college, I start working at a sports newspaper as well. But uh, it's it's called Record. It's one of the biggest in Portugal. But but in that newspaper, I do other other sports. I do like surfing, MotoGP. Sometimes I tweet about that as well. Uh, and and uh, Formula One, for example. But obviously, mostly I do mostly tennis. But 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 other sports as well. I, I also follow football. But but I don't work too much on on football. Basically, mostly on on other sports like surfing, tennis, and. And and motorsports like the, the those I, I, I said. Well, yeah, that's interesting. Obviously, tennis is the big one you love the yeah. most. Yeah, exactly. Um, but you, you say you like football as well. Yeah, so much. Obviously, in port in Portugal, it, it's by far the number one sports. It's football, and then everything else. And and, and you you can see that 
when when we analyze the results of of our athletes on other sports we don't have much tradition in pretty much anything besides football we have obviously yeah. a a, a, a great national team and a great a great a, a great couple of players obviously with with Cristiano Ronaldo in the last in the last decade but 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 yeah then we have a couple of good results in other sports atle athletics but 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 very specific things but we we don't have a, a very a very strong sports culture in Portugal apart from football football it's like a religion here yeah, most definitely is. And uh, I bet it's absolutely crazy when you've got one of the best players of all time in your country. Uh, we can only dream about those type of things in England. <laughs> yeah, don't know. We have a we brilliant have... Premier League. We have the Premier League. Yeah, yeah. you have the, be the best league in the world, yeah. Yeah, I know. We just have, we're just lucky when these players come and grace the uh, turf in England. So, yeah, we obviously had the, uh, well, we were blessed with Cristiano Ronaldo for, I'm not sure how many years, about six, seven years, however long it was when he was at Manchester yeah. United and he completely blew the pre like Premier League away. So, yeah. but we don't, we're not here to talk about football. <laughs> uh, I'm just really interested, like, uh, do you have a background in tennis yourself? Uh, what, what sort of got you into tennis? Yeah, it's it's kind of fun because it, it was it was a family thing, but but I was really the f the first to to actually play. I started playing tennis like eight or nine years old, but nobody in my family uh, in my family really played tennis, and I, I and I, and I played some some juniors tournaments at a decent level, but then I stopped when I when I went to college. But I still play. I still play. I, I played early earlier today in the morning. Oh, nice. With <laughs> With a, with a friends, I, I still play like two three times per, per week, but but obviously not not playing tournaments anymore. But but yeah, and I, I was never great at playing tennis, but but since since 10, 11, 11 years old, I, I really start to follow the, the the tour and really enjoying watching. And then when I when I went to the Israel Open for the first time to watch live, I was really overwhelmed with all of uh, with all of that. I really enjoyed playing uh, watching tennis live. I think it's uh, I really enjoy to watch on TV, but but watching tennis live is really a different thing. Yeah, I think I it's it, it's a real, it's a, a completely different experience. And and yeah, I then start to follow the tour and 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 obviously starting to 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 enjoy watching some players, and that obviously helps you to to follow a sport. And and tennis, thankfully, has has really really great names over the years that 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 make people love the sports and that what that was pretty much it but I, I didn't really have someone in the family that forced me to like tennis or to play tennis i i had uh, my father and my my uncle and everything that they enjoyed tennis they enjoyed watching on tv but but yeah there is no really a, a strong back background on my family around the, this sport Something you actually do, which I love, I must admit, is on your Twitter feed, you'll always see you cover all tennis. So it'll be the ITFs, challengers, women's tennis, men's tennis, across the board. And um, I think that's amazing because we try and cover a lot of challenger tennis on the podcast. We we actually really enjoy it. We think uh, the level is just so high. Um, so it's brilliant that you're sort of uh, promoting tennis from all bases because you do get the odd fans who very much they only focus on the grand slams or the masters or the, or the just the big higher end tournaments uh so i think that's brilliant for tennis that we that there is someone who is promoting it as a whole yeah i try to because i, I really I, I follow many portuguese players that that play at that level and i and i follow some tournaments even live in portugal we we have a lot of itf uh, former future yeah. events and yeah. and you start to follow some players on those tournaments, and you and you start following the, the tournaments and the players. When when you see, I, I remember watching Carlos Alcaraz play for the first time yeah. when he was, I believe, fourteen. He won his first ATP point in a in a small uh, future in Spain. And then obviously, when when you see that guy starting to win matches at that age, you you then start to follow to follow him on the Challenger Tour and and etc. And obviously. Following the Portuguese players at that level, you also you also start to 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 enjoy watching tennis at that level. And yeah, and yeah as you said, the there there are some incredible matches at, at challenger level and yeah. at ITF women's level. There are amazing players, 
at that level, younger and some 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 players that that were top fifty and now are playing challengers, trying to get back to that to 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 their to their rankings. And yeah, I really I try to follow as much as I can. Obviously, my priority is still the, the tour because it it's what it's what it's what what I work during the, during my days, especially on TV. Because even if we we uh, actually we we followed, I believe on on my channel three or four challenger events on TV. But but mostly we do ATP tour. And 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 when I'm when I'm commenting on TV, I can't follow ITFs and challenges at the same time. As I, I I try I try to follow as much as I can. No, no, yeah, it's yeah. really it's really good. Uh, I know. Obviously, you're saying you're following like the Portuguese players as well. Uh, there's, yeah. uh, I mean, there's no one really right up there, right at the top, really. I mean, you have got one player inside the top 100, one just outside the top 100. One player I want to speak to you about though, who has sort of been looming around on the radar one of your younger uh prospects nuno borges is that the correct pronunciation? Bor borges? yeah yeah that's nuno borges that yeah. that's right <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it is he's pretty good but but he was out of the radar because he was at the uh, in college he's yeah. one of the, he has one of the best ever college records in in the united states he won like 300 matches in four years which is which is incredible and and he he really is doing well on on pro tour obviously he lost some years his ranking is still not as high as 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 his level in my opinion he no. i believe he entered the top 400 Correct, uh, yeah. after after making a, after winning his last itf but yeah he had i believe six or six finals on itf world tour this year which which was the most from from any men's player yeah, he's pretty good. I think he, he can do. He can do. Surely he can enter the top 100. We we had just, I believe, six players in our history inside the top inside the top 100, but three in the last six seven years. So we are getting better. Obviously, we had we had João Souza. He's yeah. still in, yeah. in the top 100, and he won our first ever. Uh, AT, ATP, ATP singles title, our first, our second, and our third. He had three <laughs> titles in ten, and ten finals, I believe. Uh, obviously, second week of Wimbledon, uh, playing against Nadal yeah. last year. So he, he, he really did something that that is very special for Portuguese tennis. Despite having uh, uh, he had a terrible last last season, but but with with some physical uh, problems as well. But about Nuno, I think yeah, he has the level to. Um, to, to be great, maybe to be even better than João Sousa. Obviously, that's a lot of pressure. Yeah. He still has to prove himself on, first on the challenger level. He had a couple of very good wins on the challenger level this year, but but he still didn't have ranking to play a lot of challengers. So this uh, 2021 here going to be very uh, going to be very important for him, I believe. Yeah, I think. Wait, so. did you say just a second ago that um, only six players have been inside the top 100 for Portugal? Yeah, exactly. That's crazy um, for me. I would, you'd expect that number to be a lot higher than what it is. Uh, yeah, what, what, do you, what do you think the reason for that is? Sorry. It, it, it's, a, it's a matter of culture, I believe. It, it, it's not... Uh, it, it's getting better, uh, uh, but it's not a, a, a sport as big as okay. football is in Portugal, for example. Yeah. But that's not, that's not only a, a, a tennis problem in Portugal. Uh, we we really don't have we never had a, a top basketball player uh, or or a top handball player or a top uh, golf player for example so it's not really a tennis problem i believe juan okay. was 28th in the world i believe which is actually better than any basketball player we had in in our history we never have any player in the nba for example we had a, a very, one of the best ever women's basketball players but but never a, a guy in the nba so it, it's it's really a, a thing of culture of sports culture in portugal we 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 only care we obviously the country only cares about football and we, you can see that on the newspapers you can see that on the tv shows 
and, and yeah, that's a problem. It's getting a bit better, but 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 we're still not at at a, at a level that we can have kids like uh, dreaming about being tennis players or being other things that that are not related to to football and we i was talking about six six uh, atp players on the top 100 and and on the wta tour we only had one in our history in our history that was wow. michelle larcher de brito i I, I believe you, you you can remember how she beat obviously Ivanovic and Sharapov at Wimbledon and Kuznetsova. She was very good, but then she yep. stopped because she was so good, so young. Then when she started losing, she lost motivation. And now I, I believe she's working like selling houses or something like that, True. which is wow. which is sad because she's still she is younger than me, actually. She's 26 or 27. Okay. Maybe she can come back one day. Um, right. Well, so right now you have uh, for the women's Francisca. Is it George? Yeah, George. Yeah. George. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's yeah. your top one at 459 in the world, which is pretty crazy as well. Like just yeah. think that there's not many other women uh, on that side. But moving back to the men's and moving back, uh, like you were saying about uh, there's uh, just like a struggle really for the young players coming through on the men's side. What do, what do you think? Uh, well, obviously, you've just spoken about Alcaraz Garcia and uh, his rise to sort of fame now. Uh, there's a lot of weight on his shoulders. Uh, what sort of uh, thoughts do you have, like, from when you first saw him play to where he's playing now and the, the, the level? How much has it increased? Because you've, you've sort of seen the whole uh, progression, really. I think, obviously, he got bigger, he got stronger, and that that's the first, that's the first part. Mentally, is well. Is he was always very good, I believe, and he has a very good coach, and, and that helps. Yeah, Looks yeah. like a very centered kid with a good head, uh, very talented, obviously, and that's what you first see yeah. when, when you see a kid, 14, 15 years old, hitting the ball like he did and like he still does, and and obviously he, he has a very good coach, <laughs> a coach that that was a, a world number one player. He plays on a very good academy. That's something that Spain has and Portugal doesn't. Yeah. We, if obviously João Souza, for example, our best Portuguese player, uh, practice and lives in Spain because he doesn't have, uh, he doesn't have. Uh, I'm not talking about really the conditions or the courts or the weather, but in Spain they have, the, they have a lot of players to hit with every day. They have a lot of good academies. Yeah. They have a lot of good coaches. And that obviously helps. And 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 Carlos is is very good. He's very talented, and he's he's looking stronger. He's looking very 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 stronger, uh, very stronger physically. And, and he obviously he will, he will still grow a lot. I believe he's seventeen now. So it, yeah. It, it, and in this moment, it re, I I really believe it's it's a matter of of focusing on on what he wants to improve, and and starting to compete against the players that that. That he has to beat. Maybe he, I, I heard uh, Ferrero saying that that he wanted Carlos to be top fifty, I believe, next 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 year. Wow. So we, we will need to enter some <laughs> ATP qualifiers and and to start beating some top one hundred players every week. I obviously think he has the level. He has a very very a very interesting game style that I like. Very aggressive. Yeah. Very good footwork. Uh, a bit different from what we saw from from Spanish players around the year, um, along the years, but but yeah, now they are yeah. changing. They are not really a type of Spanish player anymore. We see Alejandro Davidovic Fokina, for example, also a very aggressive player uh, like Carlos. But then we see Jaume Munar, which is m uh, much more of a, of a defensive player. Yeah, with yeah. A, with a lot of top spin on his shots. But yeah, I really like Carlos' game. And I really think he's a good kid, and I hope he can he can follow his goals this season. I top fifty, it's it's tough, but I think it, maybe it's doable. He, he will turn eighteen. Uh, Shapovalov was top fifty at eighteen. I don't think it's impossible, but obviously we'll need some 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 wins at ATP level. Yeah, definitely, totally agree. What uh. I've what do you think? Uh, we've obviously watched so many of his matches on the Challenger Tour, and there's just so many amazing shots that he pulls out. What would you say that you think his his best shot is? Because uh, he has so many tools already this early in his career. Yeah, it, it's tough to say because because he really has a good serve for his age. Yeah, he has. A, I really does. like his. I really like his backhand. When I first saw him. 
I, I, I thought his backhand was amazing. And it still, technically, it's still my favorite shot. Okay. I think it's, a, it's the most consistent of them all. But le- then I, I really like the way he moves on courts. Yeah. And I really like the way he does everything so, so inside the court, so aggressively. Yeah. He has a very good volley as well uh, and, and, and very good sense of the game, which is something that we, we sometimes it's tough to find on a, on a very young player because they, they all, uh, the, the, the top juniors players, they hold it, the ball so very, very well. Yeah. But then to play pro, to play pro tennis, you have to think a bit more. And, yeah. and you have to... Well, that and, was... and I, I, you, you alluded yeah. it to earlier. The big thing with him is up here, he switched on. He's such yeah. a young kid, but he's so mature for his age. And uh, we, was, we did our award ceremony, I think it was like last week now, and we actually gave the newcomer of the year to Lorenzo Massetti. It was very tight between them two. Uh, both incredible talents, both come and bursting onto the scene. Them two, they played each other, I think, I believe maybe once or twice last year as well. Yeah. Uh, very close matches as well. Uh, how interesting is that battle going to be in the upcoming years? And uh, Italian tennis is on the rise big time, isn't it? Yeah, they, they are doing well. Uh, inside the court and outside as well, uh, yeah. as as the ATP is now pretty much dominated by Italians and with, with the ATP finals going to to really? Torino. But but yeah, they, they have like two very good young players in Sina and Musetti, and, and they are very different, which is which which is kind of fun. I really like I really like both of them. I think Musetti, Musetti is is pretty good. I, I I think um, he obviously had maybe a better year than than than, um, than Carlos because he did he did better at ATP yeah. level, especially those couple of weeks in Rome and the other Italian tournament, but. But I think Carlos, for me, looks a bit more prepared for the Pro Tour at the moment. Uh, he, he looks like more like a man, but, but those things ch- change very fast when, when they are 17 or 18. Maybe the next yeah. time we see Musetti competes, he will look like a, a stronger boy and stronger mentally and etc. And Sin- Sinner, obviously, is, is very, very good. I, another player with a very good coach. For me, uh, Ricardo Piatti, obviously one of the best coaches in the world. Every 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 player we um, works with gets better. So yeah. I th- I think it's um it's a very good match. And and Sinner, yeah, he's one of the best ball strikers in the world, in my opinion. Yeah. I think at, at, at the moment, and, and you, I, I believe Nadal chose to to practice with him during the first during the first quarantine uh, week in, in Melbourne. Yeah. And that says a lot about, about the player. That says a lot about the respect that, that the top players have um, about Sinner. And I think those two players are obviously top 10 material, at least. Then we will see if you can if they can obviously win Grand Slams and win Masters 1000 and, and maybe but do even better. We'll have to see, but obviously <laughs> the potential and the talent is there. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, I think something that was quite interesting when we spoke to Yannick Hanfman on our last podcast, and he was actually saying, because uh, he's played both of them twice, Alcaraz, uh, that is, and Massetti, and he said that the difference between the two that he sort of saw was Alcaraz has more of the all-round game, yeah. which will sort of get him to maybe a higher like place from consistent tennis, but Massetti... He's the type of person that can do like the Stan Wawrinka and have one blitzing tournament where he'll destroy everybody. And then that will throw him into the equation of who's going to win the tournament because it's they're two very contrasting players. It's really, really exciting. Yeah. And I, it's fun because I, I talked to Pedro Souza, our Portuguese number two. Oh, great. We, yeah. And, and he played Carlo. I, I, I talked to him. Like five or f- four or five days after he lost to Alcaraz in Barcelona, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And he played that as well, and he played senior. And I asked him about about these young players, and he told me, Carlos is the best of them all in terms of potential. He told me he will be number one for sure. Obviously, that's a that's <laughs> a lot of that's a lot of pressure. But but yeah, the the I believe the the players have the sense that. That guy is so so mature for for his age, and so it's, he looks so prepared. And, yeah. and and he told me he told me that he played Carlos in a very very windy conditions, and for Carlos it was like it, the conditions were perfect. He was not bothered bothered by that. He was not no complaints. He just played his tennis and played great and beat Pedro, who was I believe the first or the second seed 
uh, that yeah. tournament and in pretty much plays finals on 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 clay challengers pretty much every week so so yeah that the, the players really recognize the, the 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 talent of those young guys wow. yeah awesome. i was going to ask you actually um obviously being such a big name now with so many people following you you've obviously tweeting out about these players and stuff do you have like a lot of responsibility on your shoulders to always remain um not biased as per se i forget the impartial. Word. word impartial yeah yeah I, I i try to even if obviously t twitter is not my it's not my job and and some some people sometimes yeah. have, have uh, problems to understand that because i yeah. really do uh, everything that i do on twitter is really because i enjoy being on twitter and i enjoy providing information to people because i really don't i really don't promote even my my work my my work in port in, in on twitter because most of my work is is in portuguese and most of my followers don't speak portuguese so it's really two different kind of things that I do. I do my daily my daily work, and obviously Twitter helps me a lot when I commentate on TV, and helps me a lot a lot when I write all my articles on my newspaper and my website because. Uh, most of the time the work that i did on twitter is you know, the work is off then when i when i start writing because i on twitter i already have all the information but but yeah it, it, it's obviously tough to it's obviously tough to not give sometimes i want to give a bit more of an opinion and i try to contain myself because i i know that having having so many people uh, following me for for different reasons uh, um, I really don't feel the need to express my opinion every time. Yeah. But yeah, but, but most of the people who follow me knows what I like the most on a tennis player and what I what I really don't like so much. But but yeah, but even sometimes, like once per week, I I have some some bad responses about people mad about something that I said or that I didn't say. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's tough to to make everybody happy, but I, I try to do my best. Well, it's crazy you say that because obviously we both use Twitter as well. And like we notice it even on our podcast. So if we'll say not even a bad word about a particular player, they're the fans of that player. So I don't want to say names, but say a Djokovic or a Federer or Nadal, these fans, they will follow them regardless of what happens. They never see no bad in them. So if you was to say something in any shape or form, which is slightly against them as per se, then you're obviously you're going to get them in drones coming for you. We get them in the comments. We get them in our live chat when we go live. Um, do you, do you suffer like from a lot of trolls or um, sort of these fans just really going for you? Yeah, sometimes it it depends on. I, I really had some situations, some tough situations in the past. We, obviously, for for example, when Serena Williams had that situation with Carlos Ramos, the the Portuguese empire, which I know well. Yeah. And and then what what I what I what I uh, spoke or what I what I write, wrote on Twitter about the situation what it was pretty much what everybody said, and and the Serena fans got very mad uh, with me because of, because of those tweets with a lot of with a lot of insults and 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 yeah I I sometimes sometimes I get a bit I get a bit frustrated and and when 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 people get too disrespectful I have, I obviously have to block because when when you have so many followers there are some trolls that that are only there to really bother you but but yeah not too much because I really don't I really don't 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 do uh, don't give too much of my opinion yeah. about some about some topic. I, I I really try to 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 give information. For example, most most recently about the situation of Alexander Zverev, and yeah. and his, his ex girlfriend. Uh, I remember tweeting something about his play um, he, 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 that he was playing really well, like on a winning streak in Cologne and yeah. Cologne and Paris, and obviously playing playing well in Paris till the final. And I tweeted about that and about the way that he was playing much more aggressive on the forehand with David Ferrer <laughs> coaching yeah. him. And people got very offended because I was not saying in every tweet. That the, that there are those allegations for from his his former girlfriend. Obviously, it's a very delicate. We had the, we had the exact same situation on the podcast, the same incident, yeah. or where we're not condoning what's happened, but we're not talking about it. So it's like, what's where? where what's our stance? And everyone always wants to know what's going on with it. 
um, is very tricky for sure. And I feel like it's probably more in intensified for you having such yeah. a big following. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, I really what I, what I try to do is obviously to give the, the information. I believe I believe that I was one of the first Twitter accounts to give uh, to the, the the to share the link to one of of uh, his former girlfriend interviews about the issue, and I obviously tweeted every time Sasha talked about the issue. So you can see the information on my on my on my Twitter feed, but I I really don't feel the need to 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 say in every tweet about Sasha that he is going through this situation because. It's really not the, my goal. The goal of my account on Twitter is really to provide tennis information as much as I can. Obviously, there are some some extra tennis subjects that that affect the the, the players. Obviously, that yeah. they are not robots. They obviously uh, Alexander Zverev is playing is when he's playing, when he's on court. He knows that uh, he's he's going through a difficult time, and that's that has some influence on his on his tennis but we really don't have to to tweet about that uh, five times per day yeah yeah for sure and on a bit of a lighter note you spoke there <laughs> about how um you were saying that you broke the news first on certain things i feel like you do that a lot with a lot of different things so whether we're mm -hmm. looking at say with its draws or players withdrawing from tournaments or whatever the news is you seem to be so quick with it for a start, how are your fingers that fast? And another thing, where do you get the news so quick where you can report it instantly? It's crazy. Yeah, I really try to, I mean, with the draws, I really try, try to follow them live. And with, with the results and the informations and the quotes, I really try to go to as much uh, press conference as I can and to obviously watch as much matches as I can. And to, and, and yeah, and to, and to follow obviously the work of other colleagues and of other in in media of other countries and i tr really try to to find what they are what they are writing and what they are saying and yeah and and obviously twitter is 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 one of the one of my best sources of information you you see a lot yeah. of uh, a lot of things on twitter on social media you can sometimes ask players about about some things and and yeah and and then it is really to to love what you do and to have and to and to and to have time to do it yeah no it's very big for the yeah. players as well i think they was finding out about whether the tournaments were being cancelled last year based off looking on twitter which is crazy yeah. as well very yeah much. exactly yeah. and they, they were not happy about that so no they sure. weren't <laughs> poor, very poor from the atp uh i wanted to uh, sort of touch on you were just saying there obviously about uh in like going to tournaments being part of press that type of thing how much uh access to, uh, have you had to players yourself have you had a chance to interview uh many high profile players yeah when i when i, I i'm not i'm not on tour as much as i as i want because of as i said i i'm i'm commentating yeah. in a big portuguese tv channel we have the entire atp tour so I pretty much have to be in Lisbon every time we have a Masters 1000. And if I if I go to a Masters 1000, I pretty much miss miss some work. So I I usually yeah. go to um, Madrid, which is 45 minutes fly from from Lisbon. And I, in, in in that week, I pretty much lose money on TV to go to to the tournament to follow live, and then. And then yeah, I, I I I obviously have the access to the to the to the players when I when I go to the tournaments and yeah, I interviewed pretty much everybody that played. Um, I mean, I went to Wimbledon twice bef before before actually starting commentating, and now we have Wimbledon, and I can't go to Wimbledon. But I, for example, I, I was uh, accredited for Roland Garros and uh, this year. I was at the U.S. Open last year, so so yeah. When when you go to the tournaments, obviously you try to you try to to interview and to go to the press conference as much as you can. Obviously, it's tougher to get one-on-one -on -one interviews with the with the top players. Yeah. Uh, they usually just go to they just do TV and they then do do, do the press conference. But uh, but obviously, it's a very nice experience to go to to go to to the press conference of the best players in the world and to and to try to speak with them as much as we as we can and obviously as i started as a just a big tennis tennis fan not not as as as, as i mean it was like I, I i'm left college seven years ago so it was 
it it was just it looked it looked like it was yesterday that I was just as a tennis fan as a <laughs> yeah. at a tennis tournament and now I'm actually talking to them and 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 trying to to provide information to people from what I talked to them and I uh, and from what I, I I saw them them do and them play so yeah it's 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 a very nice experience for, especially for someone who loves tennis so much as I do oh definitely oh, I think very one, interesting. I was going to say one more qu uh, bit on the end of there. Sorry, JJ. Uh, one question, which I'm sure everybody would want to know. Have you ever spoken to the big three? And if so, what were the questions that you asked them? And did you get any uh, awkward responses or do you get any good feedback from them? Yeah, I was at, at press conference of, of them all. Um, and obviously of Serena too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, 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 I don't remember anything too awkward with them. Okay. Just like, yeah, I, I believe I, I asked obviously them, uh, them all many questions, but, but yeah, not, nothing too special. They are obviously three very strong personalities. They, yeah. they, they all are, are, are all very good speakers. They they speak very well about the game. They they know very well. They they know the game very well. And and about uh, about about the tree, the, the most interesting for me to 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 her is is Nadal because I, I obviously understand Spanish and English. And it's fun when I when I go to Madrid and when I go to a tournament when he obviously has to speak the both both languages. And and, and it's fun to, uh, for me to understand that he's so different. When he when he talks in Spanish, really? and, then, and when he talks to when he talks in English, because he obviously he doesn't ex express himself uh, himself as well in English as he does in Spanish, and he analy he analyzes the game much much more in Spanish, okay. and he, 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 I, I believe he is not he is not as nice in Spanish to the Spanish reporters. <laughs> as in English. Usually in English is much more politic, and in 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 in, in Spanish is is more analytic. Funny as well, isn't he? He's got quite a good sense of humor in English. He's... Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and and in Spanish, I believe he's a bit more tough to the to the to the to the journalists because obviously he has a personal relation with most of them, and and sometimes he sometimes he's a bit more more strong in his world in his words with, with them but yeah it's it's really fun obviously to 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 be to to to, to live and to work in a generation that has those three personalities yeah. and 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 obviously they mean a lot inside and outside the game and and for for all the fans and obviously when when we we talk about Serena Williams it's the same i was in a couple of Serena presses as well and obviously Charapova as well uh, when when she when she was still playing and yeah it's it's a fun experience there there are there are days that they are not as as in, as in a good mood <laughs> in, <laughs> in others but but yeah most of the times they are they are very very professional with with the media as well that's no, it's very yeah. interesting i would not have known a lot of that to be fair if you wouldn't <laughs> have said because when nadal speaking in spanish for me, it just sounds beautiful. It's just all flowing off the tongue. Um, so I only really listened to him, apart from when they trans see it translated from his Spanish. Didn't he forget um, to speak Spanish once at one press conference? They asked, they one Spanish guy spoke to him in Spanish and he replied in English. And he was like, no, no, Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> he forgot he was in that total press conference mode. It must so, happen. There's so many yeah. press conferences guys are having now. They're just huge in the sport. And I think not even in tennis, it's just in the world now. They are just free, big big people serena as well yeah um but but what i wanted to ask you is actually about your tennis commentating so um we do a few live watch alongs now where we're watching the matches we have fans in the chat and we sort of commentate on the matches uh how have you found commentating because i'm not sure if you've been doing it that long right was it a few years yeah two two three years but but it it was actually my my biggest passion since i was a kid so okay. not 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 only obviously you you when you are a kid you don't think ah, I want to be a tennis commentator but but I, I I when I I had journalism in college I I that's my my degree and and radio was really uh, always my passion <laughs> it was my best okay. subject it was like when I was a kid I really uh, I really wanted to to do some sports commentary that that's that's what I think I have the most talent for, and 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 yeah, and it, it's it's the same thing with tennis. I think that I, 
that I write pretty well about tennis, but I think sure. I, I, I'm even better speaking about tennis uh, than, I, than, I, than I am writing. So, so yeah, it was kind of a natural thing. I started doing a couple of appearances, uh, doing Grand Slams on that time on Eurosports. And then when when they when they needed um, when they needed one more person for, for for this specific TV channel, they called me and and I did the tests and and yeah, it all it all in, went good. And it, it's something that I really really love to do. To be honest, I, I that's that's the thing I most love to I, I love them I love the most in my job is really to is really the tennis commentary. Obviously, there are some pretty boring games, the boring matches that we have, <laughs> that you, you have to do. But most of the time, most of the time, it's something that I really, really love, love to do. And I, 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 I time really flies when I'm when I'm commenting tennis. is even better than I'm than than when I'm just watching. And that, that's that awesome. Of- it's so lucky that you're doing a job that you love so yeah, much. Exactly. But what I want to ask you is a tricky question: Would you exchange? Being a tennis commentator to be a player. Yeah, yeah, I believe if I if I was if I was good enough to be a tennis player, yes, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't have that. I don't. Have, I don't have enough talent for that. But but yeah, if if I was if I was as good at, at, at playing tennis as I as I I hope I am commentating, I obviously would, would, would change it. Because because even you you can you can do tennis commentary after your your yeah. time for your tennis career. Most of most of the players do that. So so yeah, that that would be that would be good. Do you have any uh, special special things for your commentary? Have you got any uh, particular uh, go to uh, sayings, or is there anything particular that defines you as a commentator that people know you for? I, I think I I I talk uh, I talk more I, I talk a, a lot more than many of the commentators I believe. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes people tell me oh, you you talk a lot on air, but that that's fine. Maybe it's a bit. Uh, sometimes it's a bit too much. I try to I try to control myself. When I started, I was I I, I was I was much worse in that department. But yeah, I I like to talk a lot when I'm coming. Obviously, not doing points. But yeah. but uh, obviously not to points, but but uh, yeah, I give a lot of information. I think that that's the that's the the, the biggest the biggest factor of my tennis of my tennis commentary. And I really try to 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 commentate to the people as if I was talking to a friend about tennis. Obviously, uh-huh. uh, taking some uh, taking care of the language I use. But but yeah, I I I, I try to make that informal and and try to. And try to 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 commentate what I'm what I'm saying like I was talking to a friend or something like that. It must be pretty tricky at times though to rein in your emotions. So say you're on these big points, like it's a five all and the tie break, six five, you've got match point or big big opportunities and big changes in the match. It's very nerve wracking. We do our live watch alongs. I'm there sometimes. I can't watch if it's a player I particularly like or I wanted to win. Uh, it's tricky, isn't it? I just in, on a big stage where you're, it's your job and you're doing it as a commentator. You've got people relying on you to produce that information, the commentary. It's very tricky at times to sort of gain to keep your emotions in and sort of just hold yourself together in these big moments because it's definitely yeah, it's, an emotional sport. <laughs> yeah, it's tough, and it's easier for the for those people that are not too emotional. I have I have some some colleagues on 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 tennis commentary that they they really can stay low in emotions during the entire match but I really can't and and sometimes it really doesn't doesn't need to be a player that I really care or a Portuguese player for example that I want to win sometimes even if if there, there are even if it's a first round for example but if the match is good and it's close you really get involved and and yeah it's tough to control the emotion and to and to bring to people the 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 they uh, an, an emotion related to what to what you are you are watching some, some sometimes you are a, a bit more exciting that, uh, excited that that it's that it's supposed yeah, and sometimes yeah. you you risk also not my case most of the time but sometimes you also the match is great and you are a bit bored and you can provide <laughs> the emotion to the people that yeah that usually doesn't happen to me, but 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 yeah, but but it, it it's 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 tough to it's tough to control, especially when, as you said, it's 
it's a player that that you that you like so much or that you are rooting because it happens obviously i i commentate a lot of portuguese players on tv and you obviously want them to win but you 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 don't want to sound too 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 biased eh? on, yeah. on that, on that yeah. point <laughs> But yeah, it, it, it's tricky. But you get better with the years, I believe. With the experience, you 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 get better, and you can control that that better. How do you yeah, cope uh, with the super long matches? That's what I want to know because we've we were trying to do it for a few, and some of the matches go for like four and a half, five hours, and talking <laughs> for this amount of time. We found we didn't even realize how much of a strain this can put on like your voice. The next day, we were like nearly dead. Yeah. <laughs> You only feel that when you when you turn off the microphone. I, yeah. I when I when I'm on air, I, I really don't don't feel the time the time passing, uh, unless the match is terribly bad. If the match is terrible and it's boring and it's unforced error after unforced error, you feel that a bit more. But if the match is good, obviously, uh, commentating uh, Wimbledon final, uh, I, I didn't do that final. It was one of my colleagues, the Djokovic Federer final, for example. Yeah. Tiber twelve ball in the fifth. I, I was tired for just watching. I was I was imagining, well, if, if I was there, it would be very tough to control myself because the match <laughs> was so good and so emotional. Obviously, Federer having three match points and then losing. It's it's really it's really tough. But I think would 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 does the match who is commentating the match is really not feeling tired at the moment. He's feeling excited, but then when you finish, when you finish, you feel you know like your voice and your head, especially. I was I believe once eleven consecutive hours during Wimbledon. Uh, I did Gosh. I believe two two best of five matches that went that went the distance. So yeah. Wow. It's it's tough, but it, but it's you 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 only feel the your head and your voice. At least I only feel my head and my voice when I when I when I finish when I finish the the live during the live. You are with the adrenaline. You don't feel that. No, yeah, I totally agree with you. Uh, yeah, we were fight feeling it the day after, and then we had to do another one. I think it was the quarters or then the semis or something like that. But uh, yeah, we had yeah, to do that day, I think, and it was a tricky, tricky day for sure. But uh, we and, got through it, and it was actually good fun at the end of it. It's good yeah. to re reflect back and watch back on some of the stuff you did, some good moments and some good tennis. So when the tennis is good, everything else is good. So it all falls into space. Um, yeah. but, but, but what I did want to ask you, you did mention there, Roger Federer, and it's actually our last topic to discuss with you today. Uh, and then we let you get on your way. But with Roger Federer, what, what do you think we can expect from him next year? Yeah, it's it's tough to say, but I believe if uh, if Federer is coming back, and I believe obviously he is, I I, I watch uh, um, a small clip of him practicing today in Dubai. Yeah, I think if he is coming back, he's coming back to challenge the top players. He he wouldn't he wouldn't come back if he, if it was at the level that that you really couldn't say on on top. I believe top five or. Or top ten maximum and fight for for a couple of big titles. I believe he, he will still. When when we analyze, imagine if he will play now the Australian Open. I think he will still he will still be the favorite against most of the players in the draw. Obviously, mm. not not maybe against Djokovic, Nadal, or Team, maybe Medvedev. But then against all the rest, it's tough to it's tough to really to pick against. Fair. We have to see. How we will play? How he is going to play? How, how that knee will will react? But we can't forget that the last time we saw Feather compete at the Australian Open, he was far, far from 100%. Yeah. Obviously, he had that knee problem already. He looked like he had a back problem as well, and he made the semi-finals against Djokovic. <laughs> Obviously, he got lucky twice with Milman and and with Sandgren in the quarters, saving. Yeah. A lot of match points, but he still made the semi-finals at the age of, of 38 and playing with with a with a couple of injuries, and th that says a lot about about Federer. I think that uh, I don't know if he, if he will win a Grand Slam again. It, it's tough to say. I think it, it's obviously a possibility, especially on a fast surface at Wimbledon. He was he, he was one point away of winning Wimbledon just. One year or so ago, yeah. uh, ago, and he made the semi-finals of the Australian Open last year. We can't forget that uh, this yeah. year, actually, we are still in yeah. 2020. 
Yeah, yeah. He made the semifinals and 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 he played a, a really good first set against Djokovic. Was a breakup or two breaks up, I believe, and then he collapsed a bit in, in the in the last two sets. And obviously, losing against Djokovic in Melbourne is normal for everybody. Yeah. But 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 yeah, I, I think it's I, I think if if he come if he comes back to play the Australian Open, for example, he will be at a level to compete against everybody. Obviously, he can lose. He can lose on a bad day, on a good day of a, of another player. But but I really think we, he will come back at a at a competitive level, and I and I obviously hope that because having Feather on tour is great for the tour, is great for the fans, is great for tennis, and I hope he can he can still play obviously one or two more years at least. Oh. This year, I think he will. He will try to. Absolutely. He will try to play to play every every Grand Slam and the Olympic Games. Let's yep. see if he can if he can get ready in time for the Australian Open because obviously it's a special tournament this year. He, he, he has to travel with just two people after being more than one year out. I think all those things he, he's thinking about all those things, but I think it, it would be better for him to to actually have competition if even if he. Uh, losing the third or in the fourth round, it would be good for him for his season. I believe it would be good for him to, 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 to get to get some play uh, in Melbourne. Well, I I was uh, <laughs> I brought up a uh, ridiculous scenario like when we were talking to Gil Gross. I said he might not be able to win another Grand Slam. So throw all your eggs in one basket and just have Federer train on grass for the first six months of the year until Wimbledon doesn't play any other surface and then just attacks Wimbledon and goes for that Grand Slam. What do you think of that? I think <laughs> physically that, that would be interesting because obviously you, 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 you would get there fresher than the other players, but I, but I really think that he needs, he needs matches. Yeah, yeah, and, definitely. And, and obviously I, I think I don't think it makes a lot of difference for him to play to practice so, too much on grass because it, it's it's a very natural thing for him. He like he needs like maybe two or three days practicing on grass and he's good. <laughs> he is good with the surface. So I I really think he he, yeah. um, he he needs he needs matches. He needs competition. And I I think for example uh, when he when he was uh, when he had three, uh, two match points against Djokovic in. Last year, he played Roland Garros the month before, and he played pretty well. Made the semis as well. Played, <laughs> yeah. I believe, three three clay tournaments. So, I really don't think, I really don't think it's a, it's a it's a big thing for him to miss some parts of the season to, to be strong uh, on the okay. other parts, unless he's not feeling well physically. And then, yeah. if he's tired and if he's feeling some parts of if he's feeling some parts of his body, then he should yeah. obviously keep. The ones that that are unlikely for him to win, and that's obviously the the clay tournaments. But if he's feeling healthy, and if it's all good with him, I think it's better for him to to keep playing, because yeah. with the, with his age, I think he, he needs obviously to select the right tournaments. But he needs to keep playing to 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 be in shape. Totally yeah, and I'd have to agree with you, mate, uh, on that one for sure. And there's a question which we ask everyone. It's the last question we always ask. So I feel like it's best to ask you too. If you had to pick one player on tour, it doesn't have to be one of the the, the, the big, uh, better players. Uh, who is the one person you'd love watching the most? No, that that's a tough one. <laughs> because we've had some very interesting answers on our podcast. Stitch, stitch him up yeah. now. He might have to if say. I, if I, if I, yeah, if I have to pick one player to commentate, it's it's better for me to say it that way. I, I would pick Nick Kyrgios. Hey. Yeah, with with whom I had some 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 problems on Twitter in the past as well. <laughs> really, he, he replied to me a couple of times, hungry about uh, uh, tweets that had had nothing to do with him actually uh, about Zverev, I believe once, okay. and he went to defend him. Uh, but yeah, to co to commentate, yeah, uh, curious is is the most in interesting to to watch on any day because you really. You really can can predict what's what's happening, and and then to watch live to watch live it's it's tough to understand it, it's tough to it's tough to say. The first time I I saw for example Federer to uh, playing live I was very impressed 
the first time I watched Kane Shikori play live, I was shocked with his footwork. It, it, it's really impressive to watch K live, for example, and 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 obviously watching watching Nadal on on clay, and I, I only had the chance to watch him on clay in Madrid, which in the, which is in a bit of different conditions, a bit of altitude. It's tough for him, but watching Nadal play uh, on clay at home. It's really a it's really a, a a tough experience. Yeah, if I have to pick one player, obviously the in term in terms of style, the player that that I that I enjoy to watch the most any day is is Federer. Yeah, but 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 to commentate the most interesting for me as a story as as a personality is it, curious. So yeah, it's tough to say. <laughs> it's a popular choice. It's a popular choice. We've had, uh, I think it was even Hampman said the same thing, didn't he? He likes watching Kyrgios the most. It might until... be the Wesler, maybe. Oh, no, either, either one. I forget now myself. It's popular, though, because it's an, it's an entertainment. It's a show when he's on uh, on court. That's the thing. That's what he's bringing to the table. He could be 100 in the world. He's going to pack the stands. And that's what uh, people want to see. So Exactly. Well, thank you so much, Jose, for answering all of our questions. We just have one more thing we want to uh, do, what we do with all of our guests, which is called the shot clock. And uh, it's pretty simple. We're just going to fire maybe a couple of things at you, which are just like you just choose between, or we'll just fire you a question and just give us a quick fire answer. If you don't want to answer it, just say pass. <laughs> yeah, there's no pressure. Any questions no. you don't feel like you want to answer, don't worry about it. Just pass or just nod of the head or whatever, and we'll move on to the next <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, literally. Literally. Right, okay. So we're going to put Jose Morgado through the shot clock. Time. Here we go. Jose Mourinho or Luis Figo? Um, Jose Mourinho. Huh. Top spin or slice? Uh, slice, at least for me. <laughs> Favorite court surface? Grass. Nice. Wilson or head? Wilson. The mountains or the beach? Uh, the beach. I'm Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> Easy one. Porto or Benfica? Uh, Benfica. Yeah. I I'm red today. Yeah, there are okay. actually... <laughs> <laughs> Cats or dogs? Uh, dogs. Favourite Grand Slam? Wimbledon. Oh. So, on the plane, by the window, or in the aisle seat? Uh, by the window. <laughs> <laughs> Something you can't do. Oh, I can't dance. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. Underarm serve. Good or bad? Oh, good, good. So, would you rather John Isner serve on the Dow's forehand? <laughs> I believe John Isner serve. <laughs> it's a popular one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Backhand, single or double? That's a tough one, but maybe single. It's different. Red or black? Uh, red. <laughs> sushi or curry? Uh, sushi. <laughs> <laughs> If you had a superpower, what would it be? Oh, maybe to be, to be invisible, maybe. Yeah, okay. that would be fun. <laughs> Line judge or technology? Uh, I, I still prefer line judge nowadays. <laughs> Old school. No. Winter or summer? Oh, summer. <laughs> <laughs> Obvious one, I guess. Uh, something you're scared of? Uh, I don't ra like reptiles too much. Yeah. Snakes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. The first thing which comes into your mind? Oh, 
the first thing Oof. that I gonna watch football up next. I believe Tottenham is playing <laughs> something like that. Tottenham. <laughs> 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 oh dear. Okay, and last but not least, who is the goat? Uh, uh, nowadays, still Roger Federer, I believe. Uh, on the men's side, on the women's side, I, I think Serena. Serena. Very close with Steffi Graf, in my opinion. But but yeah, Serena and Federer at the moment. Perfect. There, there you go. go. Well Time. Thank you, Jose. You have I'm passed nice. the shot clock. Hopefully, it wasn't too bad for you. No, that was oh, fantastic. Okay. I, I think so. I think I did well. <laughs> Uh, yeah. You did very well. I threw in a uh, question there just because uh, uh, obviously I'm in charge of our Instagram. Uh, JG's in charge of the Twitter. Uh, and I've noticed on a lot of your stories, there's a hell of a lot of sushi flying around uh, on your story. <laughs> so I thought I'd throw that one in there for you. Yeah, at least once once per week, I like to I like I like to eat some sushi. I really enjoy it. No, yeah, I'm not, sure if I like the, I'm not sure if I like the Tottenham comment too much. I'm a West Ham fan myself, so it's not not the best. Yeah, I, I follow Tottenham more now because of because of Mourinho, but he's struggling a bit in the last couple of weeks. He can he can win he can win a, ma a game. Yeah, let's see if he can he can go through in the League Cup. I believe it's today the quarterfinals of the League Cup or something like yeah. or something like that. But yeah, I, I really I, I really like. Mourinho, not 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 really his playing style, to be honest. Nah. But but I, but I enjoy him as a as a as a as a coach and as a personality. I, yeah. I think he's really one of the one of the most special sports personalities in the world. And it's and we we are both Joses, so it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> he is the special one. You are the special one on yeah, tennis on you. Twitter. So, uh, yeah, it's just been an absolute honor to have uh, the king of Twitter, tennis <laughs> Twitter, really, for us. Uh, yeah, Jose Morgado. Fantastic. Yeah, Love thank you so much for coming on. Honestly, it's been really insightful listening to you talk about so many different things in tennis. Uh, I wish you a very positive 2021. Hopefully, we can have a relatively normal schedule and a lot of tennis. Yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah, I'm sure we'll be, we'll be looking up for your tweets and what, what you're getting up to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. And obviously, happy Christmas and a happy New Year for you. And with a lot of tennis, we hope that this pandemic situation will will get better, so we can have a we can have a calendar and we can have crowds, uh, people in yeah. the stands. Obviously, it would be it would be fine. We we we'll probably will need to wait a couple of more months, or maybe four or five months until everything really really yeah. gets gets better. But but yeah, let's hope we have we have all a good here as a tennis fans and spectators. And obviously, uh, tennis went through a very tough time. Obviously, has as a human beings and sports as yeah. a whole. But but tennis had a very tough year. And players have a very tough year. Tournaments had a very tough year. And we hope that 2021 will be will be great on that sense. Yeah, indeed. Well, you have a fantastic Christmas, Jose. Thanks once again for coming on the podcast. And uh, yeah, have a great new year. We'll speak to you in the new year, I'm sure. Thank yeah. you, guys. Thank you so much. And just also a big thank you to everyone listening. Uh, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. Uh, and if you've not already, hit the like button too. Uh, we'll see you for the next one very soon. Oh, yeah. Also, don't forget uh, Jose Magado on Twitter. We're going to put all of his uh, details in the description below. Make sure you follow this guy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Cheers, guys. Cheers.